Well, hi, everybody. It's so good to be here with you because I'm going to share some ideas about being mindful and living mindfully. I think that's great because uh, I certainly needed it too, so it gave me an opportunity to learn as much as possible. But when I think about my childhood, I remember I was cared for by my grandmother and grandfather. My mom worked in town and my dad drove a bus, so he was gone for many days at a time. And I have really fond memories of my grandmother spending time with me. She taught me everything. She taught me how to read, to learn my colors, to play the piano, to cook. She taught me basically how to function in the world. So when she went through the aging process, well, I was there for her. I remember reading a book for her when she fell, and I remember visiting with her by her bedside. And that's when I learned the importance of caregiving. So I'm here today to share some ways about being mindful and bringing that and joy to your caregiver responsibilities. We all can get so heavily involved in caregiving that we forget to take time to lighten our load, and that's what this is designed to do. So, but before we begin, what I'd like you all to do is take a few moments to center with me. So I'm going to ask you to sit up straight, uncross your legs, close your eyes. Hey, here I am. <laughs> Well, we got that out of the way. <laughs> Close your eyes and just breathe gently. Let your thoughts drift away. And just take a moment to relax. And take one more deep breath. And now simply open your eyes. And how did that feel? Pretty amazing, right? It is amazing to let go and to relax and just be in the present moment. And now you've had a beginning taste of what mindfulness is all about. I was talking to you earlier about the value of being with my grandmother when she went through the aging process. And it was a, a, an ability for me to return the favor. It was an ability, a chance for me to be there for her because she was there for me when I was growing up. So there is a doctor, Mark Hyman, he's in functional medicine. And he tells us that whether we realize it or not, we stress ourselves out every day. And one way to deal with this is to develop a mindfulness practice. And I'm going to share some ways with you that you can bring mindfulness into your life if you choose and see it for what it is. It's a preventive medicine and it's a remedy for reducing stress. Because no matter where we are, who we are, or what our circumstances are, we can incorporate mindfulness, practice it, and change our life for the better. So I'm so pleased that uh, he already shared my background with you. I'm going to add a few additional things. The first thing I want you to know is I also know about caregiving because I take care of my 91-year-old mother. So I understand, and I'm right there with you. I also practice along with um, quantum healing and Reiki. Uh, Reiki. A Hawaiian healing mantra. Now, you might laugh about the title, but the title is really not the issue. It's called Ho'oponopono. It's not the title of it, but what it does. It's a way to strengthen relationships, make changes, and live a better life. And so I will gladly and happily share this with any one of you who would like to learn it afterwards. But it's an amazing tool to add to your, your package. So I love stepping onto the healing path. I did this because of the automobile accidents I was in and the severe pain that I felt for so many years. I tried everything. And so what I finally found was that going into alternative medicine gave me another choice. And that was fantastic because I thought, if it's doing this for me, just think what it can do for other people. 
because our bodies are so fascinating and we do have the capacity for good health. We want them to operate at the highest level because this keeps us in harmony and balance. Healing is an inside job. If we stay with it long enough, we're going to cultivate a sense of peace, happiness, joy, and gratitude. To truly heal helps us set our cares aside and focus on the moment, and that's what mindfulness does. So let's dive into the presentation. We're going to learn about reducing our stress and living mindfully. What we're going to talk about is caregiving the phenomenon of it, how often it happens, and then we'll go into a mindfulness practice and the importance of caring for ourselves. I do also have a series of mindful solutions that I'm presenting to you. Not that I'm going to say you have to become mindful, but if you choose to do this, it will give you fantastic tools. And then we'll summarize everything. Family Caregiver Alliance statistics indicate to us that most of us will be informal caregivers at some time in our lives. Many family, family members assume this role, naturally because a family member has fallen, become ill, has a mental impairment or a disability, and we just step up, like I mentioned to you that I did. Informal caregivers provide for their loved ones or friends without compensation and sometimes without support. Most unpaid caregivers don't even recognize the title, and that's how I was. Someone told me, you're a caregiver, and I went, what? I didn't even connect the dots. Figures show that about 60 to 75% of caregivers are women. They've taken on the role out of concern, and even though they're working outside of their home. But adding it up, whether we're male, female, young, old, caregiving can be really difficult. With few breaks or time off, sleep is often interrupted, they get tired and eat on the run. Caregiving can take a toll on their health as well. Their emotions can be strained. Just dealing with the effects of role reversals alone can be challenging because all of a sudden, you may be caring for someone who cared for you and that can seem unusual. It's a challenge. So let's define caregiver stress. WellMed describes caregiver stress as the emotional and physical strain of caregiving, often resulting in depression and sometimes contributing to health problems like diabetes or heart disease. While anybody can be stressed, primary caregivers tend to take on the effects more often. To cope, many of us set our needs aside and stay so busy that we don't even have time for taking care of our own health, our own physical wellness, emotional and mental. Duties can range from managing every aspect of the individual's life, from bathing to eating to medication to making all sorts of decisions, which could be med medical, dental, and even financial, handling all those steps so this leads, of course, to caregiver stress. Here's some signs. See if you can identify with any of these. I know I do. Sometimes we just feel overwhelmed or sad. And then other times, tired, just really tired because we're managing so many things. Maybe we sleep too little, maybe we sleep too much. We could be involved with weight gain, up and down. We could become irritated or angry. We could feel isolated or deserted by others. And that could even affect us to the point of having headaches, body aches, and difficulty with handling things like uh, prescription drugs and so on. So it's a huge phenomenon. In 2015, the National Alliance for Caregiving and ARP did a statistical analysis of the number of caregivers in the United States. Now, this was two years ago. I imagine the numbers have changed. And they found that 43 and a half million people were providing unpaid care to an adult or a child in the United States, even though many of them were struggling to make ends meet. A little over 34 million provided care for an adult 50 or older. Now the majority of 82% were caring for one adult, 
but 15% cared for two, and 3% were caring for even three or more people. What a challenge. A little over 39 million people were caring for adults 18 years of age, and they were dealing with mental impairment, disability, or illness. And then a little over 15% were caring for someone with Alzheimer's or dementia with memory challenges. The numbers in our population continue to grow because our population is aging and more and more military members are coming back from the war wounded. So this is a challenge. Let's take this as a purpose to increase positive emotional responses for this care and our challenge is to turn to learn how to turn anger to love, isolation to connectedness, and denial to acceptance. But the first thing I want to do is thank you for taking on this role. Thank you so much. Because even with outside support, you're doing an amazing challenge, an amazing job. And it's challenging, no doubt. But nobody can ever take away your memories of hugs, kisses, kind words, coming from the one that you care for for this tremendous job. And that's priceless. So now let's talk about mindfulness. Dictionary.com defines it as the state or quality of being mindful or aware of something. And it involves ways to focus your attention and be present without judgment. Now that's a big decision. To be mindful is to be awake and accepting what is without wanting it to change. Mindfulness is gentle, nurturing, and helps you cultivate a sense of compassion and acceptance. Mindfulness can be practiced formally, of course. You can join a group or participate in an activity together, or you can do it simply, like taking a task of washing dishes instead of rushing through it like we normally do because we have so many things on our plate, rushing, rushing, rushing. Just listen for a minute as I describe the way we can turn it into a mindful task. Make it an art form to notice the temperature of the dishwater move from cold to warm. Notice the bubbles that form when the soap is added. Feel the warm water as you wash each dish and then place them to dry. Notice how carefully you wipe the surfaces so dry so they're sanitized. And now that you're done, you can release your tension along with the drain, down the drain with the dishwater. Mindfully washing the dishes reduces the chances of your family member or friend becoming sick with infection. And now we've taken this simple task and turned it into a mindful experience that we participate in with a sense of love and care. Now, you've involved your imagination. You've taken it as what it is and not made it anything more, but draw in each moment to experience each step. And you can begin to see how it elevates what you're doing. It changes it. Now it has more meaning. Now it's not something we're just doing and then hastily moving on to the next step. And that's being mindful. We're involving our imagination and it increases a sense of self-worth, a job well done. So I thought it was really funny when I searched this because I have a habit of thinking about this anyway. Mindfulness is not thinking about something really hard. No. <laughs> because when we're first getting into it, we're wondering, how in the world am I going to be mindful? How in the world am I going to manage all of this with everything else I'm doing? But it's a skill that we cultivate over time. By leaving the past behind, we're focusing on inner peace, and we don't have time for regret. When you stop worrying about what may never happen, you allow yourself to fully experience every moment. So, how do we start? by cultivating a beginner's mind. And that means we're eager and open to learn. When you listen fully to someone's words, voice, or feelings, without filling in the blanks of anticipated responses, you open yourself up to new ideas. 
Everyone can tell when you're listening for your turn to talk, right? We can be around people and we can notice that because they're so busy. We're so busy all the time. Oh, okay, you know, hurry up, hurry up. I have something to say. So this gives us a chance to focus in a different way. We pay mindful attention. Gets us away from the drama, gets us away from the rush, and it reduces our stress. Consider giving this a practice a try because you may be at a place where your buttons are getting punched and you're getting really anxious and you're, row, oh, just bring it down, bring it down. Mastering mindful listening without judgment or second guessing is worth it because it's going to strengthen your relationship. Your relationships with the people that you care for, your relationships with the people that you're going to for help or support, the people that you're talking to about your situation, you're also listening to them about their situation. And so, of course, it's going to strengthen your relationships. You begin to live with pa listen with patience, trust, acceptance, and an open mind. I don't know if any of you have heard of Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan, but he's written a book called The Mindful Nation. Now he's in Congress and he felt like and saw the value of mindfulness and incorporating it in our, uh, our United States. He saw it as an effective tool for limiting the rising levels of stress that we're facing in our complicated society, but he calls it a different name. How many of you have heard of centering prayer? Centering in that moment, and that's a mindful activity. And by doing that, stopping maybe every once in a while through your day when you feel like things are really getting rough and take a moment to relax and breathe in and center will make a huge difference in your health and your well-being. And so he encourages everyone to take up this very simple practice. I don't have to tell you that caregiving is a demanding job. I'm sure you stay busy most of the time. So when you're tired, you might forget about mindfully speaking and just say whatever's on your mind. Just know that by hearing and making negative statements continually, that frustrates you and the one you're caring for. So instead of reacting with anger, think about pausing, breathing deeply before you answer the questions you've probably heard many times before. It gives you a chance to reframe. And when you're reframing, you have an opportunity to see that person's comments, that person themselves in a new light. And it changes things. It gives you a chance to respond with love and not irritation. Showing kindness is great because it helps you rewire your brain, heal your wounds, and change your focus from sadness to happiness and joy. That's why it's so important to be compassionate with yourself. Instead of filling up every moment with activity, step away when you need it. Take a mini break. You might think about taking a little nap when the ones that you're caring for are napping because that's a good use of both of your time. You might think about talking to someone when you're overloaded and you're stressed. You might ask somebody to come in and just give you a few minutes away for a moment so you can take care of yourself. And these are wonderful things to do. Why? Because it gets us away from the attitude of, oh gosh, when is it going to be my turn? You know, I'm really, I'm really stressed out. I need a break. So, what I'm going to do is share some mindful ways with you that you can think about incorporating. Now, what I've done is give you several different choices uh, and see if any of these fit. Some of you may already be doing some of these things. Others may be new and different. So, here we are at our morning routine. What do we normally do? What's the first thing we do, right? Do we grab our cell phone? Do we get our, our schedule ready? Are we up and going? Are we grabbing our coffee? You know, we just bounce out of bed. Well, let's think about reframing. Let's think about relaxing and changing that alarm from really loud to maybe to chimes or to music or something gentle so that we come into our, our day gradually. Next, let's think about hydration. 
first thing we do when we get up, what do we do? Run, make coffee, drink that coffee. Coffee for champions. Let's get going. Let's have that coffee. Right? Go, go, go. Remember, we've slept all night long and our body hasn't been hydrated, so we need to take some water, drink some water, bring ourselves back into the day, and later, of course, we can add that coffee. Next, think about observing nature. Think about, instead of rushing for technology, look outside, take in the sky. Look at the tree, listen to the birds. Allow our eyes and our bodies to soak it all in. Well, why, why would this work? Because a mindful practice calms the portion of our brain called the amygdala and moves us away from fear. It also benefits our immune system. And with practice then, we can let go of those stressors. A big lesson for all of us is to remember that everything passes. And we'll teach our body to be peaceful by doing a mindful practice, even in uncomfortable situations. Now we're ready to face our day. Now let's talk about living fully in the present moment. Living fully means we've unleashed a vibration uh, they call the universal law of attraction, and that is like equals like. When we focus on a great day, we have a great day. When we focus on a negative day, what happens? We bring in a negative day. Ever started talking about it? Have you ever noticed that when you are saying, I'm so stressed and I have so much to do and I can't believe and I don't know how I'm gonna get it done and done and done and done, and then this happens and that happens and pretty soon we're counting and going, okay, I've heard that things come in three, so I've had my one, have my two, and now I'm looking for my three. Okay, where's my three? I gotta get rid of it right away because that means, <sighs> but actually what we're doing is we're attracting it because of that universal law, like equals like, we're making it happen. So here's what Nancy Kreisman of The Mindful Caregiver says. Embracing a healing presence requires you just to be in the moment together. And we all need to go. <sighs> Being present doesn't mean we have to be in a formal meditative or religious practice. Just being aware of what's happening is enough. When you find yourself overwhelmed in stressful activities, I have a three-stage process you might want to think about doing. First of all, Notice what's stressing you. What value are you placing on this situation? What are you feeling? Are you facing it or are you deflecting it and putting it aside because you have so many other things you're doing? Now we wanna shift our thinking because really stress isn't bad, right? Stress just is. We're the one that put all the emotions to it. So what we want to do is face that stress, open up. And this keeps us from going down a very habitual path. Then finally, rewire your brain by handling life stressors as they occur, prevents us from being undone by the day and allows us to see a different point of view. Now let's talk about moving the body. What's the first thing we do when we get up in the morning? Do we bounce out of bed? Do we just jump and go? Oh, I don't feel too good, but we get up and go. Okay, let's think about stretching instead. Stretching and slowly coming into our body, relaxing and just allowing that tension to leave so that we get a nice, fresh, beautiful start. Some of you may be practicing yoga, but you might want to think of, if you're not, add it as a part of your daily routine. Because yoga is designed as one of the components of mindfulness-based stress reduction, or MBSR, and it's a program that teaches us how to embrace our total selves and live without judgment. And that really is putting mindfulness in a nutshell. Last, here's something that you may already be doing create a garden. Gardening is a terrific way to be mindfully in touch with nature. It gives us time to go out to work the, the work, the land, to feel the plants, to be involved. It changes our moods and it gives us an opportunity to relax and focus. We can cultivate a garden and we can be nearby the ones that we care for and this gives us a nice break.
a break from caregiving duties. And also, gardening will increase a sense of connection and belonging. So if you don't have time or space for a garden, think about that porch that you can fill up with beautiful potted plants or herbs. How do you like my picture? <laughs> Why do you suppose when I was talking about meditation, I put a picture of a frog? Because anybody can do it. Young, old, anybody can take a few times to meditate, to relax, and to let go. Dr. Eric Lukes is an assistant professor at Brown University, and he knows the value of meditation because what he's learned is it has a significant impact on cardiovascular health. And it's considered just as important as risk as obesity, smoking, and blood pressure. So when we practice meditation, we give ourselves immense health benefits because they can lower our emotional and chemical stress levels, ease our depression and anxiety, decrease pain that we may be going through, and even lower the incidence of memory lapses. And believe me, as caregivers, we have a lot on our plates and it's easy to forget and get overloaded. So if we can take just a few moments it's also going to calm us down. I don't know if any of you have heard this, but it's a phrase that's been around a long time, that when we're thinking normally and get involved in our ego self, that we have a lot of chattering mind. You've got to do this, 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 I'm saying this, I'm saying this. So meditation brings it down. Bring it down. Center for a few moments. Find a quiet spot. Close your eyes. Breathe normally through your nose. Let your words come and go. You might even choose a cue word like peace or calm. Be one with your thoughts. We're not trying to push them out. We just allow them to go and go back to our breathing. And do this for about 10 to 15 minutes and things will significantly change. Meditation keeps us in the now and that certainly prevents us from regretting the past worrying about the future and everything that we have to do that day or that faces us beyond that. Now this is also related because as Americans and living in the stressful society we are in, and now we add caregiving on, to, on top of all the other stress that we're feeling, what do we forget to do? Breathe, right? We're up here. We're not down in our body, we're forgetting to breathe. So, remember when we were little, we didn't even worry about that. We laughed and we played and we lived fully and have you ever heard a little one that's upset? They just, oh, they just go at the top of their lungs and they release all that stress and all, the, all that anxiety. Things are a little more complicated with us, uh, for us as adults and now as caregivers, they're a little more complicated. We get busy, we shut down and now we want to think about just breathing. So here's an interesting test. It's important that we are breathing in a whole brain situation. To find out whether we are or not, we would take our hand and hold it under our nose and just breathe for a few minutes and see, am I breathing out of both nostrils? because it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference to be breathing in a whole brain situation. Now, if we're not able to do that, then we can spend a few minutes alternating our breathing habits. And here's what I want us to do. Okay, we take the thumb and the first finger and we're going to close one nostril and breathe two times in and out of the nose and then we'll open and close the other one and breathe. So we'll start with your thumb on the right nostril and let's breathe two times. Now we're going to alternate. If you can remember to do that simple thing, it centers you, it grounds you in just a few moments. It brings you back to yourself and it changes things. 
if ideally, if you can take 10 minutes to set aside, just do something simple like closing your eyes, focus on a spot around your navel and breathe in and out, letting your thoughts go, that would be ideal. But as caregivers, sometimes we're rushing from activity to activity to activity. Think about just taking a few little breathing mini breaks during the day when you're driving to the next appointment, when you're sitting in the doctor's office, when you're waiting to, to do another task and just breathe. You'll find that breathing fully makes a huge difference and you're also teaching your body how much you love it, how much you care for it. Now this one might actually take a little bit more of our time because we're going to need to go out in nature and do some of these things. But nature is a wonderful teacher. It consciously nourishes us, body, mind, soul, and spirit. And being outside is so important because it reminds us of all that is, of that there is more to life. And there's some simple ways that we can do this. Now the first one might surprise you. It's called earthing. And it helps us make a soul connection. You think, oh, she made a mistake here. Soul. Well, what I'm talking about is take some time, take your shoes and socks off, walk or sit, let your feet touch the grass, and reconnect. Because we may not realize it, but nature is there to support us. And there are microbes in the soil that actually help our, our body create antidepressants. It stabilizes us. It helps us take better care of our bodily reserves. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is forest therapy. Have any of you heard of this? It's really wonderful. Forest therapy is also called Shinrin Yoku by the Japanese and they're the ones that invented it. And what they're talking about is going out in a forest Limiting interruptions. How many of you can think about limiting interruptions? Put that cell phone down and don't talk. And just walk through the forest and mindfully take in the environment and spend a few minutes doing that. It will really refresh you and refresh your body. Finally, some of you may have heard about labyrinths. They're an ancient meditative tool and some are indoors, some are outdoors, and they're used for ceremonies. Wonderful, what a wonderful way to go walk into a labyrinth with a problem or a concern that you have in your mind and just walk to the center and leave it there and walking out knowing that you've refreshed for a few moments. All of these activities are designed to increase your balance, your insight, your harmony, and sense of peace. Finally, we're talking about practicing self-compassion. That's interesting because we know as caregivers, one of the most important things we can do is be there for the ones that we care for and be compassionate with them. But there's a distinction that's really important and so I want to make that and know it's very important to know the difference between empathy and compassion. Dr. James Doty, neuroscience professor of Stanford University says, we're hardwired for empathy and compassion. But empathetic reactions are a little different. When we're in empathetic re reaction, we might not realize it, but we're actually taking on that person's pain. And that's exhausting. What's worse, what could happen is that we might completely turn off and deny our feelings, which could be dangerous, okay? So what we want to do is think about compassion because when we're compassionate, we come from a place of strength and it's important to realize that there is a deep connection between compassion and physical and mental health. When we act compassionately, our brain, heart, and other organs respond in a positive manner, our oxytocin levels are raised and that's the feel-good part of our body. It just helps us feel good. Our sympathetic nervous system calms down and the fearful fight-or-flight response is suppressed. Expressing compassion helps you care for the ones that you love and yourself in a balanced way. It means being kind to someone else, to be able to, to show concern without trying to fix them. If we're caregivers and we have a bunch of responsibilities, sometimes what happens is we are moving them along. Okay, we have this and this and this that we have to do, but mindfulness is giving you a chance to relax from that. 
and just allow them to give them a little understanding. And here's one I thought was very, very important because as caregivers, stress levels can be really high and we've already established that. So what happens is meals can go astray. Sometimes we don't eat on a regular basis. So what happens is that we might be in a hurry and just scarf something down really fast or maybe not even eat at all that day and then wind up eating late at night. So we're not having good habits. So another reason for overeating could be is that we get impatient and you know, we're just eating our frustration. So here's some things I want you to think about instead. Let's practice some self-compassion. And that means being kind to ourselves and not beating ourselves up because we eat that pizza. Come on, next time we'll have the salad. <laughs> Give up black and white thinking because sometimes eating that pizza gives us a sense of comfort because it reminds us of things that we used to do when we were younger. And you know what? It just tastes good. <laughs> so be in the moment and make a healthier choice. Also be mindful of our self-talk. Avoid thinking of ourselves as a failure because, oh my gosh, here we are eating pizza and what's that going to do to us and I should be eating more healthy and I should be eating... Uh, 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 uh. Offer words of care and compassion. Enjoy it. Make it a wonderful experience. And you know that next meal will take care of itself. By forgiving yourself when things don't go smoothly, food isn't ignored that way or consumed as stress relief. Instead, it serves as what it is. It's giving you strength in the moment to be able to go on to the next experience. I'm going to summarize now and tell you that cultivating awareness is a wonderful way to slow down and connect with yourself because that way, if we're taking good care of ourselves, we're taking great care of our charges. It prevents us from getting bogged down in the details and being aware gives us a way to deal with the grief of slowly losing our family member or friend and allows us to accept the situation for what it is. Like the serenity prayer reminds us, give me the serenity to accept what I can't change, the courage to change what I can, and the good common sense and wisdom to know the difference. So thank you for letting me share some ways that you can let go of your stress and be present, even in the midst of your hectic and demanding role as a caregiver. I wish you well as you reflect on these suggestions and find a way to become more mindful. You know, Professor John Kabat-Zinn of the University of Massachusetts runs a mindfulness meditation clinic. And he made the comment that says, it's indeed a radical act of love just to sit and be quiet a time for yourself. And as Elizabeth Thornton, is a managed professor at Babson College, and she tells us the key to creating the mental space before responding is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a way of being present and paying attention to and accepting what is happening in our lives. It helps us to be aware of and step away from our habitual reactions to everyday experiences. So we've talked a lot about mindfulness today. I've given you lots of ideas. Some of them you may love, some maybe, well, they don't quite fit. But before we close, I have one more exercise that I'd like to run you through. This one's gonna be a little exciting because what I would like you to do is give give each other that thankfulness. So what, this is how we're gonna do it. I'm going to give you the instructions. We'll do this for a few minutes and then I'll pull you back and close my presentation. So I'd like you to find a partner, someone that you're sitting with at your table, decide who's gonna go first or second, sit and look deeply in each other's eyes and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. So take a few minutes for that and then I'll pull you back. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, everyone, calm down. Mindful breathing. Calm, 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 calm. Wow, how did that feel? 
It just feels really good to be compassionate with each other, to be loving and appreciative, right? It feels great. It creates all that energy I was talking about. Like attracts like, that exciting energy. And it gives us a feeling of joy because we need to remember the person we need to appreciate the most is ourselves. Because giving is receiving, we benefit the most when we recognize the contribution that we're making. It's important to our health, our family, our relationships. Remember to take care of your own needs and respect yours and your loved one's boundaries. Mindfulness is an inside job, and the more you accept and appreciate your situation, the better you're going to feel, making it easier to feel peace within. So my contact information is here, and any of, any of you have questions or would like to talk to me later, I would love to visit with you. In closing, I wish you happy memories as you travel on this special journey with your family member, your loved ones, your friends. And I hope you'll take the time to make this a joyful experience. And so I, what I have to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you.